Now, next step, we're going to create our release. So let's go in and create the release. When we create a release, it's going to take a snapshot of that process and those variables at the time when we create it. So if you come in and do a deployment all the way up through test, and a week later you change the process, it's not going to affect that production deployment. It's going to use the process that was in place when you created it. So we have a version name that is auto-calculated. You can change how it's calculated. We have three packages selected. Uh, if you had more than one package for each, you could choose which version you want. By default, it will pick the latest. But let's save that and kick off. And on the release screen, you can see the life cycle. So it's going to go dev, test, and production in order. You can change that through a configuration. By default, it's going to go in the order the environments were added, which you can reorder on the infrastructure screen if they're not in the correct order. Shows us some package information and some history at the bottom that will fill up as we do this demo. So let's deploy to the development environment. Before we deploy, show that I do have the website here and it can't be reached, it's not running. So hopefully after this deployment, it does run. Uh, so there are some settings we're going to deploy to development. We, want to, we can change when it runs and if we exclude any steps, but we want it to run now and we want it to run everything, so we are going to click deploy. And this is going to take us to the deployment task screen. We're going to see the status right now is acquiring packages. It is downloading those three packages and pushing them to the machines in our environment that we're deploying to. As it steps through these, we'll be able to go in and see information, some task, that are, task information that is being logged. On the right side, you can see the history of this deployment. You can see that I queued it, and then it was picked up because there's nothing else running. It was picked up and immediately started. So if we click into this deploy database, you can see that we've got this tiered log information, so you can actually see the name of the server it's running on. And then you can see that, oh man, it's already finished. We made it, guys. We did our, our first deployment. So we made it. Let's close that for now so we can finish talking about it. Uh, that always surprises me when it pops up. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot that it's there. But it's always a good feeling. It worked. It succeeded. No failed demo today. So you can see that it goes through and it's actually running our environments or migration scripts and then we can click into the other two and you can see that it's running on our web and app server that it's going through and configuring the windows service it's going through and configuring iis if you need more information you can change the log level and how many messages are seen or you can download the raw log directly which will be the full task log in text format but for now, let's promote this to test. And same default options, deploy everything, deploy it now. And while that's running, let's refresh this site and see if it's working. Cross our fingers. Well, yeah, okay, so it's running. So our deployment succeeded, our database is running, our service is running, and our website's running. So everything's looking good. Let's go back and check on test. It's still, ah, there we go, it's updated. So this will be good because now we can see, okay, it's run on the database, it's running on the app server, and it's running on the web server. So you can see it's actually taking that service and that website going to two different machines. If I deploy to production, same thing. I want to deploy to everything. I want to deploy it now. It's going to run through and we should see something different around the website step. While this is running, I'm going to jump back to the release overview because now you can see some more information. You can see its progress through the life cycle. You can see that it's currently deploying to production. You can see the full deployment history at the bottom, along with who did it. So you see my gravatar there. And we can actually jump back to the overview of the project. So if you have multiple releases for this project, you would see a trail of releases along with where they're at in the process. Same with the dashboard. The dashboard will give you even higher level of information. If you have more than one project, you'd have a grid of projects and which version is at which environment and what's its status. So it's finished. So I do want to go in and just quickly show. So we did deploy to the database. Everything went fine. Deploy to the app server for the service. Makes sense. And we deployed to two web servers. This is because we had those two targets in that environment that both had 
the trading site role. So Octopus will deploy to both of those at the same time. You can also configure it to go one at a time or two at a time, but for today's demo, we did one. So one are all, all at the same time. So we deployed to two web servers at the same time. So we've done our deployment and that is the demo.